off in the mirror universe. Michael Burnham is sad. She is sad. The, this opens with a, a very long monologue? Yeah, she's basically recounting the last, what do you think, couple days? Weeks? I guess it's, I guess hours? it's been a couple days. Yeah. Okay. Something like that. Enough that she's really not enjoying herself. I think at one point she says it's hard being around people who are always afraid. And at the same time, she says, as you said in the previous episode, she's afraid of becoming one of them. And then just to drive the point home that Mirror Universe is evil, we have Slave Saru. Yeah. Slave Saru is not sexy at all. Do you think Commander Saru is sexy? In the gazelle kind of way, I guess. I mean, it depends on the outfit, I guess. <laughs> I guess his whole species, I guess we could assume, are slaves. That seems likely. Yeah. I mean, things aren't going good for most aliens. Uh, fast forwarding a little, she actually has a telephone call with him, and he asks her, have you run into yeah. any others of yeah. my species? <laughs> and she's like, uh, no. And I guess, I don't... That seems like I, kind of a dumb thing to lie about. I mean... And she's Vulcan. Isn't she always supposed to tell the truth? I, first of all, that's a weird thing for him to ask. It is. <laughs> we'll blame the writers for that. But he asked it nonetheless. <laughs> right. It's like they wanted to set up the awkward moment and then they were both lying to each other about different stuff. Right. Oh, what was he lying about? He didn't tell her about uh, the doctor. That's right. She still doesn't know. Oh, my God. Well, I guess she finds out toward the end of this, but we'll get to that. Right. This was a fun episode. It, it felt like um, maybe moving some chess pieces around mostly because we're still in the mirror universe. Everyone is basically where we left them in the last episode well with the exception of one person (laughs) (laughs) uh it was a lot of moving pieces around and monologues i so much monologuing because it goes right from uh michael monologuing and it turns out she's monologuing to ash and then he kind of goes off on his own little thing also yeah they're still getting along (laughs) as we said it still hasn't been communicated to her what a horrible person he is so they're still hanging out in her quarters right but then the episode moves right along because, boop, 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 there is not the Empress yet herself, but a command comes from the Empress that you must go destroy this world. Right. Evil. Go kill the rebel leader. Simple mission. What was his name? The Fox? Firefox? <laughs> For the M64. Shit, that's what I was going to say. Um... <laughs> no, we'll call him the Wolf Fox. Wolf the fire wolf. Wolf fire. fire wolf? That's the fire wolf sounds. Let's call him the albino fire wolf. Sure. Makes a lot of sense. Vok. Vok. It's Vok. <laughs> it turns out. <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> I like that. I, I think we were anticipating a lot of Mirror Universe stuff, and I'll be honest, I didn't anticipate Mirror Universe Vok. No, I didn't either. Uh, or him fighting Ash Vok. That was a great scene. Burnham's there, and her whole goal is to learn how to create relations with the Klingons. And she decides, I'm just going to quiz this guy and find out how are you cooperating with the Vulcans and the Tellarites and yeah, everyone else. Yeah, which is an interesting motivation, because that didn't work out real well when she asked Sarek about that, how to deal with the Klingons. <laughs> Sarek with a goatee. Uh, for anyone playing Mirror Universe Bingo at home, there's a goatee in this one. This was perfect. Um, I'm an idiot, and it never even occurred to me that Sarah could be in this. So I'm just really, the writers are far ahead of me, and I'm enjoying that. (laughs) But I'm getting a little annoyed that they're so far ahead of me. But he does a mind meld, and that's where he learns that uh, Michael, she's actually a good person, or at least capable of compassion. What was it? I've never seen the depth of human compassion possible. Yeah, that was weird. I don't know. but They use flowery language. Yeah, he trusts her after the mind meld. There's a lot of stuff in there that... It probably doesn't make much sense, but... <laughs> but she's quit quizzing Vok, or Mirror Universe Vok, and just trying to find out, how are you actually cooperating? How's this working out? She finds out, while well, they're cooperating, because they have a common goal, kill all the humans, or right. stop the humans. Stop being killed by the humans. But she really just wants to know, but how did you... How did the Klingons keep their identity because the first episode this whole problem was how do you keep the Klingon identity did she get an answer to that she did she said only when the houses were strong the 12 houses were strong Uh. could they accept outsiders right so she actually did but the reason that got covered up the reason you probably don't remember (laughs) is because now Ash has gone all insane and we get some Valk on Valk action here (laughs) <laughs> that that is what it was. <laughs> you don't like that setup? I thought that was good. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> um, uh, but I, I liked it because he has these trigger words, and basically it seems... That's uh, true, yeah. Once he said k and once his face was there... Oh, he triggered himself. Yeah, I guess so. And then fought himself. <laughs> Did Valk say his name? 
Or was it just his face mm-hmm. was enough? I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was kind of fun because it's one of the things that they did right off the bat is they didn't pop into a mirror universe where there are duplicates of themselves running around for the most part because they traded places with the other Discovery. That's right. And so that kind of took off the board one of the real common mirror universe tropes, uh, <laughs> but they still managed to fit it back in in such a weird, convoluted way that I just loved it. Yeah, I think I'm just realizing how big the cast is. So they were <laughs> able to throw away a whole ship, say, yeah, Discovery, they transported, but yeah, we're still left with yeah. this other cast that yeah. can really still surprise us. How did you like Volk's English? I mean, we were. I think I, at least I was making fun of all the subtitles in the beginning. Uh, not bad. But his I mean, voice is weird. Klingons have, have spoken English before, and uh, it sounds better than the Klingon. I, I guess <laughs> it, I'm starting to appreciate the real specific kind of enunciation. The way they pronounce Klingon mm. is kind of unique to this series. Is it? Which is cumbersome when they're having long dialogue-laden conversations, but I'm starting to find it very uh, identifiable, at least. Like, it has its own identity as a, a version of the language. It was fun to hear Ash totally change his diction when he would switch between cool Pacific Northwest Ash <laughs> <laughs> and evil Volk Ash. And he would just... Well, he got some reverb to his voice. He just got bigger, and he just would say, you know, okay, less. It was, it was yeah, good. I did the chin goes up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely changed change the character, um, changed the voice. That was pretty cool. Yeah. That is the same actor playing both. They they got us. <laughs> I don't think they got us. We've been pre- <laughs> predicting it since, what, episode three? When did he show up? <laughs> um, I, I'm pretty sure the episode he showed up. <laughs> We got to see some Tellarites and some Andorians for the first time. The yeah. Andorians looked pretty enterprising to me. Yeah, that was a real traditional look for that. Uh, Tellarites, they went a little evolved, a little more aggressive, a little less... Evolved, you mean upright? A little less uh, comical. <laughs> yeah, the Enterprise ones were a little squat and kind of... Um... <laughs> classic. They were classic. very classic. <laughs> very true to the roots. I think I saw the go-kart from Nemesis outside, too. Oh, you're, are you talking about that dune buggy that Picard was driving? Yeah, I guess there was, there was more of a dune oh buggy. Oh my god, I totally forgot about Or was Data driving? Picard was backseat driving, and Worf was shooting the gun? Something like that? I want to say Picard was driving, because Data flew the ship, and then they did the jump off the cliff into the back of the shuttle. Picard wanted to drive it. That was his right. excuse. Right. <laughs> of course he did, because uh-huh. it's action Picard. Yes. Wow, was that in that scene? Uh... They had a dune buggy. It reminded me of it. <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Close that loop. Starfleet dune buggy. Cool. Yep. So she talks to the rebels. She makes a deal to help them escape. Takes her, I guess, not really that useful data back to the ship with her. Mm-hmm. Well, all this has been going on. There's the, the, the B-plot, I guess, is what's happening with uh, Stemets back on Discovery. Yeah, somehow Michael was able to get an encrypted phone call over to them, which I find kind of hilarious because I thought like she'd be able to upload the data over one of those encrypted phone calls. You'd really think so. Maybe it was a low bandwidth hologram. I think you've been reading too much side material. <laughs> <laughs> so we learn in the phone call, or just after the phone call, that they have obviously figured out that the doctor was murdered. Yeah. And it seems like they're blaming Stemets at this point because he's I, still kind of unconscious. I'm telling you, man, that super strength. That's spooky. I, okay, I'm not buying the super strength, but they are. <laughs> they totally think he just woke up, got violent, and, and murdered. Yeah, I guess so. Um, and so Tilly raises the questionable point that she is the most qualified person to treat him because uh, uh, mycelium caused this and mycelium can fix this, apparently. There are a lot of leaps here. I don't feel <laughs> like this is the full scientific process at work here, but Tilly was really taking charge. Um, uh, I guess the promotion to captain has my, really helped her self-confidence. My notes just say Tilly wants to put him on shrooms. Yeah, that's definitely what happened. Which they do. <laughs> they put his brain on mycelium and stuff happens. What was her excuse that his mind... Like, parts of his mind required more activity, but he didn't literally have the organs or the the brain to do it. So if we give him 
mycelium, and they'll just <laughs> create virtual parts of his brain, and he'll cross the cosmos together, and basically he needs I, shrooms. I think I was... Yes, that was the conclusion. <laughs> uh, I was confused if that was the problem or the solution, or both. Like, part of his brain exists in another dimension or something, which is pretty sci-fi. So uh, the trick is, we're just going to give him a bunch... We're going to put him in yeah. the room again and flood him. And that uh, doesn't work. His heart stops? Yeah. Everything stops. Everything yeah. stops. They, they zap him a couple times. Oh, this was bad for Tilly. I mean, she's a cadet. This was her <laughs> idea. Fortunately, she was under Saru's supervision, and he's you the know, acting captain, so you can no problem for her. But Blame Saru. Yeah, he was going along with it. Actually, she didn't even want to call the doctors, which was kind of weird, too. I, don't, don't go there. I found this whole idea very, very questionable. Like... Her claiming that she's the most qualified to treat him, and Saru's just kind of like, yeah, okay, let's go with that. Like, What happened to all the other engineers and engineering that were all <laughs> clicking away at the computer also? Yeah, don't they have degrees and stuff? Huh. <laughs> but I guess Tilly's the secondary mushroom expert, so... <laughs> uh, but we find out that in a weird way it did work. Yeah. So he died, but uh-huh. then he started... Twitching. ...hopping around again, <laughs> so I guess he was alive again? Did they say that? Uh... I mean, the next scene, he's meeting uh, Evil Paul. In his mind. In somewhere. In the Mirror Mirror universe. In the... Whoa. Whoa. (laughs) No, it's all in their mind, because the whole thing was, we're going to bridge these two parts of his mind that have split somehow, and the mycelium are somehow allowing these two parts, and it's manifesting as evil Stemmets. Yes. <laughs> Which, Which I'm excited for because I can't wait for him to play that role. <laughs> and that's an interesting... Uh, oh my god, absolutely. Uh, and it's an interesting point because um, we don't know if Mirror Discovery had the spore drive. I mean, we literally saw him in the mirror in that one episode. A little oh, yeah. on the nose. <laughs> you know, thinking back on that, what the hell was that? <laughs> <laughs> that was foreshadowing, Eli. So yeah, technically we've seen Evil Stemmets before, but we don't know anything about them. But I'm really excited for their interaction. I think the actor can totally pull it off. Yeah, yeah. We're getting a whole uh, several episodes of people meeting their mirror selves, I guess. <laughs> really, Lorca and Burnham are going to be the crazy ones, though. Oh, yeah. Do you think Mirror Universe Burnham survived? Uh, you know, at this point, I am afraid to even hazard a guess. So that's where Stemmets is, but... Going back to Burnham, she's still on her ship. She just did this mission. It seemed like a pretty good success. Except that Ash flipped out and tried to, you know, kill somebody. Okay, yep. Okay, so not quite a success. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she, she didn't even talk to him. He just kind of shut up eventually. Even Volk just kind of pushed him off. Yeah. So it ended like that. It seemed to go well. She beamed him back up to the ship. She stowed away the plans for the Defiant. Everything's looking like it's... Coming up all Burnham. Um, yeah. She finally calls Ash on all the uh, times that he's, like, flipped out and she covered for him, which is long time coming. Yeah. They, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, but he kind of full-on uh, knows who he is now and is talkative about it. Yeah, I, they're not really trickling out the memory slowly. He's pretty much taken on the Vulk identity He, he is Vulk point. now, yeah. Yeah, and... Uh, he keeps Ash's memories? Is that what we're assuming? Because it seems like it. I, it. I think so. Because he had this somewhat impassioned speech to her, even when he was in his right Vulk mind, about he did it, he wanted the human side just for Michael. Right. But that was just more creepy than kind of convincing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so he's he's back. We have a long, stupid phaser standoff scene where where she's holding it on him from within arm's reach and he disarms her (laughs) didn't see that coming i mean they literally did that to harry mudd (laughs) it's their trick that's right that's right (laughs) so he does it (laughs) uh and they have a brief scuffle and she is rescued uh by saru bravo saru way to go slave saru well good job saru uh, I yep. don't know if I would have done it. Maybe let my slave master die. Mm, so he's yep. a better person than me. I also like how the fact that her bodyguard tried to kill her for reasons that are really weird and involve Klingons and go back like Legal 15 reasons. episodes. Uh, but nobody on the ship really thinks it's a big deal. They're just like, oh, your bodyguard tried to kill you. Because, I mean, I, I hate when that happens. 
everyone lives in fear on this place. Yeah. So what do you yeah. think the body count is? Do you think it's like a person a day on I mean, that ship? This has been brought up about the about the continuity of the mirror universe. Is like if they are executing like you know 15 people a day or something. Like how does that affect you know 100 years Economy. on? How is <laughs> how is anyone still the same? Everyone must be an ensign. I hope you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> like, you go from ensign to captain to dead. Uh, so, Michael, again thinking really quick here, uh, uses this to her advantage, and when they go to execute Ash by beaming into space, as established earlier... That's thanks. how we execute people? Yep. It's efficient, I guess. She tucks the data disk into his boot, and they do a little beam into space, beam into Discovery. Because I guess Discovery was nearby somewhere. And I guess somehow she got a message to Discovery. We weren't privy to that <laughs> phone call. Where yeah, she... I was curious. Uh... <laughs> yeah, because it wasn't a surprise. When he beamed aboard, uh, Saru had a gun on him. Yeah, the, she seemed to have gotten some information over... That Ash has gone insane. In the lock very, him up. In the very short period of time uh, between the murder attempt and I think they took him straight to the transporter room. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but she did accomplish her mission. She got yeah. some big floppy disk worth of information on the Defiant. <laughs> We're assuming it's good info. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully it has, you know, information about uh, intraspatial time wormholes or whatever they need <laughs> to get back. Ooh, what if what if it ends up that the way they get back is they and the other Discovery have to, like, replicate the accident and trade places again? Ooh, I like it. Right? I like that Voyager episode when Voyager split in two and they had to find a way to cooperate each, with each other. Was that the depressing other. one or the not depressing one? I think it was depressing. Okay. Because the ship that got beat up was the one that ended up surviving. Oh, uh, okay. It was somewhat depressing. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I like this. <laughs> I like the theory that the two sides have to cooperate somehow to yeah, merge to, back to together. to get back into the correct universe. That'd mm-hmm. be fun. So the Empress. The Empress. You called it. Oh man, that was that was a long shot, and <laughs> it came through. Giorgio is Empress of the Terran Empire. Terran. And she has <laughs> a sweet cape. That was. She has the high the collar, collar too. Oh, that was it's awesome. It's a very Vulcan collar. Mm-hmm. And a huge sword. She had like a golden flower in her hair too. Yeah. 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 That was cool. And a giant sword. Yes. Oh, my <laughs> God. That was a super sword. Uh, so, no eye patch. No. I, that would have been cool. Okay, I probably yeah. I probably would have called it too We were on really the stretching there. She was obviously very pissed at Michael. I'm looking forward to seeing more of uh, Mirror Giorgio. It seems like the next episode is just going to be all Mirror oh, yeah. Giorgio. And that's oh, yeah. going to be fantastic to have her back. So, the Empress showed up, and she bombed the planet like Michael yep. was supposed to do. Yeah. Do you think anyone survived? Do you think Uh, Sarek survived? That's a good question. I mean, I guess it depends if they're planning to bring them back later in the season for whatever (laughs) reason. (laughs) That's not an answer. Did they make it or not? (laughs) Uh, I kind of think maybe some of them survived. Yeah. Like, at least one survived. I think it would be a shame if Valk survived only because he's a Klingon and you'd think he'd be the last off the planet or something like that. He he seems like a first-in, last-out kind of leader. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm still kind of hoping to see them again. I mm-hmm. enjoyed that little crew. That'll be good. Um, I'm, I would like to see some interaction between uh, Jojo and Lorca. They've never been on screen together. Oh, absolutely. Actually, yeah. when she appeared, Lorca was already giving kind of like a, a little expression. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what the expression the was. The expression Just... is, I'm from the Mirror Universe and I know her. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about that theory real quick. So last week you proposed that Lorca is actually Mirror Universe Lorca. Uh-huh. And God, the more I think about it, the more I think you might be right. There are so many lines he has where they're not delivered like, oh, I guess we just found this out about the universe. He's just like, this is the way things are. (laughs) I thought that was just confident, Lorca. Maybe. (laughs) Maybe. Yeah, there was that scar. I think that scar is some pretty heavy evidence that we're dealing with an evil Lorca. I mean, Ash did get agonizered in the back right where Lorca has that scar. (laughs) Back agonizers. (laughs) Those look rough. <laughs> Little billy clubs with electronics, I yep. guess. Uh, also, last week, I made a mistake about something. Uh-oh. I said uh, Jason Isaac's accent was British. <laughs> it is. Uh. His Scottish accent is also British. <laughs> His native accent is English. <laughs> There's a difference. Oh, that's funny. I thought you were going to say Irish, <laughs> but no, we're going English, huh? He's, no, he's actually English. He's from, he's in, he's from uh, Liverpool. Okay, and Liverpool. His, and his Lorca accent is one he picked up from uh, some army rangers. Nice. That I think he was with for probably Black Hawk Down. Mm-hmm. And where'd his Scottish accent come from? Uh, Star Trek. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> 
I enjoyed this episode. It was fun. Michael's accomplishing her mission, so I look forward to where it's going. I really yeah. look forward to Empress Giorgio. Yes, and I have no idea where it's going. <laughs> <laughs> if that's not a good place to sign off, I don't know what is. So, Sounds good. Yep. From Mirror Universe, Seattle. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.